trained at the LGI from 1961 to 1964. I stayed in the nurses home as part of my training for two years because that was what everybody had to do at that time. On the ground floor we had what they called a Bose parlour and this was so that you could have boyfriends to visit you. They weren't allowed to come into your room but they could come into the Bose parlour. The door had to be left open. Well, obviously they didn't want us to get up to anything that we shouldn't be getting up to because of course they were guardians. When you lived in they were our guardians. Facing you, when you come into the nurses home there was a dance hall and we had dances there fairly regularly and you could invite people to that and also they used that for pantomimes. We had a Christmas pantomime every year which the doctors and the Watts sisters did and everybody went to see it but it was all in-house jokes so if you brought anybody else with you they didn't understand anything about it. The nurse's home was a little bit like living in a, um, a boarding school, but we made lots of good friends because we all supported each other. Obviously, they've been lifelong friends because we still meet up now. The plans for the new LGI look absolutely fabulous, and I think it really will make a difference to have a whole new building to provide care for people in modern times. It'll be more flexible, not as rigid as it was before, and I'm sure that people will enjoy working in such a nice environment. Life in the nurses' home was very good. Together with other people, we were um, living together, we were learning together, we ate together, we had support from each other. It was a very good life. We thoroughly enjoyed it. I was pleased because my parents were confident that I was being looked after because we were really kept safe. We had a, a sick bay if you were unwell uh, and we were full of anticipation for a career which I'd wanted to do since I was a child. I was very happy to be um, in the nurses' home and amongst people that I could trust and I knew I would have friendships for life. But of course we wanted to do our own thing. So we would often go out shopping, we'd go up to the Merrion Centre, we'd buy loads of bread and butter. And then because we hadn't got fridges, they would be put out onto the windowsill. And we had these loaves, they were called tiger loaves, they were in plastic bags and you used to tether the plastic bag under the window and then put the butter there or anything else we wanted and we just hoped if it was missing on one day we just hoped it hadn't fallen on anybody underneath the windows as they were passing by the maggot a surprise as a loaf or a packet of butter fell onto them. The phone system was interesting obviously we didn't have mobile phones in those days it was going to be a long time in the future and we had a row of phone booths in the nurse's home and a blackboard and hopefully some chalk so that if the phone was ringing, it was, could ring any time, day or night, you were dependent on somebody passing by to answer the phone. Um, they could come and get you, but most of the time they chalked a message on the board and when you came downstairs or along the corridor, you would look to see if there was a message and you'd be happy if it was a message from somebody Perhaps it was a new boyfriend or, you know, mum and dad. But if there wasn't a message then, you'd think, well, perhaps next time. I was particularly proud to receive the Eva Moynihan Gold Medal. And this medal is presented as a recognition of academic achievement and of good practice through our training. And it was instigated by Lord Moynihan, who was a surgeon at uh, the Leeds Infirmary, in memory of his sister, Eva, who was a, a previous matron at the hospital. I was delighted to receive this, and probably the only thing that worried me about receiving the medal was having to do the speech on prize day. But mum and dad, of course, were proud, and they said I did a very good speech. My abiding memories of staying in the nurse's home with the group of friends that I made, 50 plus years down the line, we are still friends. We had to be in by 10 o'clock. If you were two minutes late, home sister said, matron's office, eight o'clock tomorrow morning. In our second year, we were sleeping, our rooms were on the top floor of the nurse's home. Extremely hot weather. There were six steps up to the flat roof and one of our set said, the door to the roof is not locked. And eight of us went back to our rooms, dragged our mattresses, sheets and pillows up onto the flat roof. 
thinking we'd get a nice, reasonably cool night's sleep, forgetting that in those days, the town hall clock chimed every hour. So you'd just drop off and it would boing one, drop off, boing two. Some of us were on the early shift, so we had to put the alarm clocks on. Obviously, we had to get all these mattresses back to our rooms. And when the alarm clock went off, we were dismayed to find little black specks of soot and dirt all over the white sheets. Because, of course, 1964, Leeds, most of the big cities still had coal burning fires and industrial smoke and it had landed on us. I met my husband a long, long time ago and we were sort of reintroduced to each other when I was on a fortnight's holiday in my second year. We got engaged after eight months. My father was in agreement. I had three weeks holiday in October 1965 and we thought this would be a good idea to get married then. Miss Watts Matron found out about this and demanded to see my fiancé. He said, why? I said, you will find out. He went off to see her and she said, you do realise I am her guardian. She signed a contract in November 1962 and I am in charge of her until she has completed her training in March 66. I hope she will finish her training. And Mike said, oh, she will. I don't think words can express the happiness and joy that I felt being part of Leeds General Infirmary. It was and still is an absolutely magnificent hospital and all my friends, they still regard it as their home. I have had the chance to see the plans for the new hospital, which will be built on the site of the nurse's home. It's a very exciting project and I think that the people who trained here all those years ago cannot wait to see it finished. So I was brought up on a farm on the middle of Yorkshire Wells, so it was very, very quiet. I had a, you know, a mile to walk to school. So coming here, um, it was like being reborn. I didn't really have any experience of cities, so it was a totally different lifestyle for me, but I was certainly ready for that at 18. We were allocated a room and you know, had our uniforms by this time, and we were obviously allocated a, a ward to work on for the first three months, and sort of that broke us into a new way, totally new way of life. You know, Matron gave us lectures and said who we could speak to and who we couldn't. We were never supposed to go on the, to, to stop and talk to anyone on the main corridor, which included porters and everything like that. When you came off duty, particularly at, you know, at 10 o'clock at night, which often we were late, I mean, we'd try and rush down to the Victoria pub to get half a pint of beer or something that cost about 20p and then we would come back here uh, but we had to be here for half past ten because you were it was locked and we were signed in and out by the warden on, uh, who was at the front door called Miss Bell. Lo and behold if you were ever late because you were rep reported to Matron and then you would have to go see Matron and you know, I can assure you you never did it again because she was really scary but we were allowed out till midnight twice a week but not if you were working an early shift the next morning. We were all the same so he didn't know any different and there was a great sense of camaraderie and we did used to go in each other's rooms to chat but then there would be certain sisters like home sisters who patrol the corridors and listening for any chattering and after half past ten because you were all supposed to be in bed asleep. <laughs> But there was everything here for us. That, you know, there was the laundry and all our meals. We went down to the, was down on the bottom corridor in the LGI, the old canteen. So we were well looked after in that sense. And of course we didn't, I, I think my first salary was probably something like 18 pounds because all our board and lodging was taken off. My mum used to send me um, a pound so I could go home on the bus. I'd left my family at home. I'd left being a teeny bopper, because mm -hmm. I was a teeny bopper, I was only 18. So all of that to come here and suddenly from being a young carefree 18 year old to being quite responsible grown up yeah. young lady really. We used to have a two month introduction to nurse training yeah. and at the end we always had a disco in that room over there and your dad came. <laughs> I met him here and he'd come with some friends. I don't know where they'd got the tickets from because they knew nothing about the LGI. So we met here and that was it, as you know. 
50 years later and we're three children later, <laughs> we're still here. Obviously I started to my nurse training when I was yeah. 18, but totally different to you, I still lived at home. Yes. You gave me a car to go to my nurse training in and it was, yeah. you know, just thinking about the responsibility that I, I felt exactly the same, yeah. that suddenly this enormous responsibility was on you at such a young yeah. age. Yeah. But I had the luxury really of being able to live at home. Yeah, being looked after there. We did, we did have some fun though. We counterbalanced all that hard work yeah. with a bit of fun. Yeah. Um, there was a, a sewing room yeah. where you could make your own clothes. Out. If we could, we'd go out and buy some material and run up a skirt uh, <laughs> to go out on an evening. We didn't have a lot of evenings off. And um, your dad would come here, John would meet me downstairs. Um, we'd go off to the cinema, or we'd go to the Mecca ballroom in uh, the Merriam Centre, yeah. but we had to be back for half past ten yeah. because the doors were closed shut. Yes. And if we were, if we couldn't get in, we had to go and sit in casualty, waiting for the night warden when she went for her tea break to let us in. So there was always that. Oh, is it time yeah. to go? Is it time to go? <laughs> yeah, and it, it, it was because coming off on a night shift. You were, obviously, you know, it was exhausting, and uh, because you were quite. You've been doing all sorts of stuff on the ward. You just needed to have a bath to relax, to go to bed. And I remember doing that in the bath, nice and warm. And the next thing I knew, the bath was absolutely stone cold. And I'd <laughs> gone to sleep in the bath. So that was a bit scary, really. But yeah. in a way, we got to that. But um, because there was quite a lot of shift work, um, it was a luxury sometimes in the morning if you had a late shift where yeah. you could just stay in bed, just relax, chill. And I'd always have like a packet of chocolate digestive biscuits by the bedside table, a good book. I can't remember what it was called, but it was some sort of like historical novel that we were all sharing, yeah. you know, amongst us all in the nurses home. Reading that, chomping on the biscuits, yeah. glass of coffee or whatever. Yeah. So you quite chilled really, yeah. which did help you cope with some of, or distracted you from some of the, you know, enormous yeah. amount of emotional things that you were going through. I imagine all living together would be a good opportunity to, after a bad shift or a good yeah. shift, to be able to talk about it. I agree, yeah, totally. Um, we used to be coming through the zigzag with your cloaks on in winter, you know, <laughs> chatting away, then going into each other's room and saying, oh, we've had, someone's had an arrest today, or somebody's womb burst open yeah. and we're all going, oh my goodness, you know. And like, yeah. We were talking about it and yeah. sharing experiences yeah. Yeah. and sharing what we we'd yeah. gone through and supporting each yeah. other. Sometimes absolutely terrified yeah. of what we'd seen and what we'd had to deal with, but absolutely loving it. And growing up, which is what we were doing over the, the couple of years, with friends that we still have yeah. today because it was so important. They knew what you needed. They were yeah. going through the same sort of experiences, yeah. really. I think it's really exciting that they're going to build the new hospital here. And if you think about the hundreds of years that there's the old hospital me in the middle and you're part of that future. I started at Women's Hospital in 1946 and then came across to do my general nursing training in 1947 to 1951. Well, in the nurses' home, it was very basic, but you each had a room to yourself, whereas at the Women's Hospital, I'd had to share a room with somebody. It was well, not what you call homely, but it was comfortable and, I mean, we used to go out, we used to play, play hard as well as work hard. And we did uh, the first six weeks, the training part was in the nurses' wing and there were two sisters and we did all the uh, training for the bed making and washing patients in bed, giving them bed baths and things like that. If you wanted to leave the nurses' home and live outside, you couldn't do that until after two years. You had to get permission from a matron who wanted a letter from your parents to, to tell them that they were happy about you going. And then you used to come in and there was a locker room downstairs where you used to change your change your uniforms. And when you were in the nurses' home, all your uniforms were washed for you and you had all your board and everything paid for. When I first came to the uh, nurses' home over in the women's, that was a big shock. But coming to this nurses' home, it was the beginning of a career. You didn't really worry about things outside. And it was a very good place to be because there was lots to do in Leeds and I know 
our big treats on payday was to go to Betty's Cafe and have a cup of coffee and a cream cake, because <laughs> it was the only time we could afford it. <laughs> I've Googled the plans for this, for the hospital on this new site, and it looks absolutely wonderful. The big pro is it's so accessible being in the centre of Leeds. It looks absolutely state of the art and it will give, give hospitals more beds which they badly need because there's too many hospitals being closed but I think it's a great asset, I think it's going to be a great asset for Leeds. This film captures permanently memories of what it was like to be a nurse in Leeds between the 1950s and the 1970s. Standing in this lovely old building makes me feel especially proud and allows me to remember my own training as a student nurse here in Leeds in the 1980s. Although this lovely old nurse's home brings back so many fond memories, it will be making way for an exciting future, building two new state-of-the-art hospitals here in Leeds. We will see healthcare taken to a new level, but we will never forget the history of what has gone before.